good afternoon <coughs> my topic is current trends in the management of perthes disease perthes disease is a disease of children that is caused by ischemic necrosis of the capital femoral epiphysis which may vary in degree and severity following a vascular necrosis reossification always occur in perthes disease this is unlike the classical avascular necrosis seen in adolescents and adults where revascularization does not occur but the problem is in many cases following revascularization may lead to permanent femoral head deformity and premature osteoarthritis more than 100 years ago arthur leck jacques calle and george perthes described perthes disease but even after 100 years perthes disease remains an enigma shrouded in controversies we do not know the etiology of the disease we have very little idea regarding the pathogenesis and the treatment is highly controversial what are the aims of treatment the aim of treatment of perthes disease is to prevent this complication from occurring that is secondary degenerative arthritis in early adulthood the long term studies have shown that loss of sphericity of the femoral head is the most important cause of osteoarthritis of the hip so the aim of treatment should be to prevent femoral head getting deformed during the active stage of the disease so the three aims are to prevent coxa magna coxa irregularis coxa breva and trochanteric overgrowth according to stulberg's classification stulberg 1 and 2 gives reasonably good results arthritis does not occur and uh, stulberg 5 leads to early severe arthritis so our aim should be to get these femoral hen in the first and the second group where arthritis does not occur so whom should we treat at actively it depends on the extent of involvement stage of the disease head at risk signs and the age of the patient the extent of the disease has been analyzed by catral classification salters classification and herring's classification you all know about this classification i will not go into the details due to lack of time catral 1 and group 2 gives very good results and surgery is not indicated in 3 and 4 the results going to be poor and surgery may be indicated but catral 1 and 2 are not seen in this part of the country Salter and Thompson's classification depends on the extent of subchondral fracture and subchondral fracture correlates with the eventual extent of resorption but the problem is it is applicable only before the fragmentation stage and fracture line is seen in less than one third of the patients the herring's classification the extent of collapse of the lateral pillar is estimated during the stage of fragmentation in this study which is a uh, prospective study conducted by herring and all in 337 children in 345 hips and they were followed till skeletal maturity they came out with this conclusion herring a all do well without treatment herring b with a bone age below 8 years uniform outcome irrespective of the type of treatment herring b more than 8 years and herring c below 8 years surgery gives better results than a brace which gives better results than no treatment and herring c after the age of 8 years gives uniform poor results head address of these five signs the most important one is the lateral subluxation if the epiphyseal extrusion exceeds 20% there is very high chance of deformation of the femoral head and containment surgery is indicated if lateral extrusion is not there probably surgery may not be indicated the age of the child influences the prognosis the older the child the poorer is the outcome the prognosis is extremely poor in adolescents so 50 to 70% of children below the age of 5 years do well without active treatment or by the treatment of supervised neglect but consider containment for persistent loss of abduction which may be due to lateral subluxation in general below 5 years surgery is containment surgery is not indicated 
5 to 7 years may be needed, 7 to 12 needed and more than 12 years it is not justified. Weight relief like this was one form of treatment that was followed previously but now it is not followed. The principles of treatment are containment, allow full range of movement and probably with, with or without weight bearing. By containment we mean to keep the femoral head epiphysis in the confines of the acetabulum so that the head is molded into the spherical shape. Containment reduces the frequency of coxa irregularis and coxa magna per se have no effect on coxa breva. Various methods are available for containment, the braces, the femoral osteotomy, innominate osteotomy, shelf, combination of femoral and innominate osteotomy and advanced containment methods like triple pelvic osteotomy. We in our center do mainly femoral osteotomy and the shelf procedure. The procedure we follow is a varus derotation osteotomy or a varus extension osteotomy and usually a open wedge osteotomy with trochanteric apophysiodesis. Preoperative skin traction is given to improve the range of abduction. Subtrochanteric open wedge varus osteotomy is done. We usually pre-bend the plate 20 degree and trochanteric apophysiodesis is also done. The advantages are it bypasses the stage of fragmentation and reduces the duration of the disease. Extent of epiphyseal extrusion is reduced, reduces the metaphyseal widening, acetabular changes and metaphyseal changes. The next is when will you do the containment surgery? Containment should be done before irreversible deformation of the femoral head occurs. For this we follow the Manipal uh, modification of Elizabeth Town classification. When extrusion exceeds 20 percent, there is a very high chance of irreversible deformation of the femoral head. Extrusion is increased modestly during the initial stages of the disease, but a dramatic increase of extrusion is seen before 2B. By 3A, the extrusion of more than 20 percent was seen in more than 70 percent of untreated cases according to a study conducted by Benjamin Joseph from Manipal. So, containment should be done in the early stage of the disease, stage 1 and stage 2A. By 3A, we are too late and have missed the boat. Shelf acetabuloplasty is another procedure which gives reasonably good results. We usually reserve this for children above the age of 9 years. Now what about Perthes after primary healing because these are the type of cases which you get in your examination. The problems are hinge abduction, coxa breva, trochanteric overgrowth, coxa irregularities, femoroacetabular impingement and early osteoarthritis. The factors that decide the treatment are presence of pain, the shape of the femoral head, the size of the femoral head, congruity and femoral head coverage. Various procedures are available like valgus osteotomy when there is hinge abduction and hip is congruent in abduction after when you look at the x-rays and arthrogram. Pelvic osteotomy when there is a large spherical femoral head and the hip is congruent. The shelf a large spherical femoral head hip incongruent and trochanteric advancement when the hip is congruent there is coxa vara and trochanteric overgrowth. Femoroacetabular impingement, this is one of the main, many mechanical problems in post perthes hip, major factor causing symptoms and progression to osteoarthritis. Both CAM and pincer type of impingement are seen in perthes. Various treatment modalities are followed, but I don't have any personal experience with these procedures. Now recently there have been reports of the use of anti-resorptive therapy in perthes disease. An important resorptive component contributing to the development of femoral head deformity and in Perthes they inhibit, these agents inhibit the pathological resorption of necrotic bone. One drug that is experimentally used is osteoprotegerin. They bind, this OPG binds to rankle and prevents rank rankle interaction and effectively inhibit osteoclastic formation. Then 
Dinosumab is one of the drug that is used in the treatment of osteoporosis. It is a rankle inhibitor and it has been tried in Perthes disease. Bisphosphonate, it is an inhibitor of osteoclast resorption. It is used in adult avascular necrosis, but there are very few, there are, I couldn't get any reports regarding its use in children. But in children, intraosseous administration of bisphosphonate have been tried. And more anabolic therapy is another thing that may come up in the future. BMB2 has been clinically used to treat femoral head osteonecrosis in adults as an adjunct to core deep compression, but there are no report of its use in pediatric population. In summary, Perthes disease remains an enigma shrouded in controversies after 100 years. Etiology and pathogenesis remain unclear. Understanding of the natural history has helped us in formulating a treatment plan, though not acceptable to any, everybody. The long-term results of incongruous hip like femoroacetabular impingement are emerging and new forms of treatment like osteochondroplasty are evolving. Thank you for a patient here.